So today's webinar, it's going to be pretty informal, but we're going to cover Google Analytics. Um, basically, um, what this does is allow us to look at metrics on our web pages. Um, so the if you've submitted um, your name in the form, you should have access to Google Analytics. If not, I will uh, re-email that form out after this call. Um, basically, this is the entry page to Google Analytics. Probably the easiest way to find this page is simply just to Google Google Analytics. It's the first link right here. If you bookmark that website, um, that will bring you to this page. If you're signed in with your NOAA email account, which I already am, all you have to do is click on Access Google Analytics, and it brings up the screen here. Now, I have um, multiple accounts that I'm attached to, so that's why I see so many different things here. So I have access to the Western Region stats. I have access to Southern Region stats. But in our case, you're going to want to look for the one that says NWS Central Region Web Hits. And the easiest way to get in there is basically to do all website data. When you click on that, it will bring up this entry page, and by default, it's going to give you the last month's worth of stats. Um, you can see the daily trends here. So in this case, this is the daily trends of visitors that we've gotten. Um, you can see the total number of sessions, users, everything else for that view, and then the percentage to a new visitor versus a returning visitor. And then it covers some demographics and stuff like that. Now, this page over here is Kind of marginally useful. You can see overall web trends, but as far as exact data, there's not a whole lot there. Um, one place you can look that's kind of fun is real time. And basically, if you do real time overview, this is how many users are currently active on a website. So we have about a thousand users. If you watch this during severe weather, it probably spikes up to about uh, 2,000 users. Um, you can see what the current top referrals are. So we're getting quite a few referrals actually from the radar pages and from forecast.weather.gov. Um, and you can see which pages are the most active right now. So St. Louis, Milwaukee, uh, Minneapolis, they're, they're the most active pages right now. Um, you can also go back and look at um, longer, period, or longer periods of time as far as the real-time stuff. The other interesting thing, and this is something – oh. I want to make sure I cover too the top keywords. These are searches that our users are currently entering that are bringing them to our site. Brian, you have to up here at Wichita. We're about two slides behind you because of our bandwidth is so slow. Okay, I'll try to talk a little slower. Um, so in this case, um, basically what I'm showing here, these are the top searches. So in this case, these are the searches that brought offices to us. Um, one thing that we've very recently turned on is events. And, and what events are is we're tracking outgoing hits. So these are basically hits that um, – so the only thing that Google Analytics can track right now are hits to our weather.gov pages. So if somebody clicks on the link for your AFD, that's not inherently tracked by Google Analytics. If somebody clicks on your radar image, that's not tracked because that's going to a different web domain. So in this case um, – at least right now in the live data, um, you can see what people are actually clicking on. So this is, let me mouse over that. That is St. Louis's radar image. So there's a lot of people clicking on uh, St. Louis's radar image right now from our web pages. Um, there's also a fair number of people clicking on Central Illinois radar image. This JavaScript void right here, this is what happens when somebody clicks the WWA map navigation arrows. So you can kind of just scan through this, and like I said, this is real time. Um, you can also go back to the last 30 minutes of events. So in this case, uh, looks like the most number of people are actually clicking on the uh, basically the outgoing links for, or the Wawa the Wawa arrows. Um, also notice at the top here when we do the real time, and I'll go back to the overview. You can see the percentage of desktop users versus mobile users, and occasionally you'll see tablet on there if it's a high enough percentage and the tablet shows up as blue. So this is this is the real time, and, and in real time it's kind of fun to look at, but other than that, it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of more of a gee whiz thing. Um, the next thing you probably want to take a look at is the audience. Um, and what's kind of interesting in some of the audience stuff is, You can see the browsers that people are coming in with. 
So in our case, over the last month, Internet Explorer is the top browser followed very closely by Chrome. If I click on Internet Ex um, Explorer, I can see that the vast majority of people that visit our website are using IE11. Um, and the number of people that are using IE8 or less are very small, so that's good. I think it, it looks like it basically adds up to less than 3% of our users are using below IE8. So that can help us understand when we're designing pages what we need to target at. We can see the same thing for mobile devices. Um, engagement. This is a very interesting thing. So this is, this is a monthly roll-up. And what this says is, over, of all the hits we got during this time period, these uh, 5 million plus hits, 3.5 million of those interactions occurred for less than 10 seconds. After that, we had a significant chunk that, that generally the, the engagement with the web page was less than 30 seconds, then a minute. Then we had a, a, a significant number of users that spent probably two minutes on a page. You can also check page depth. And basically, page depth here, most people visited one page. Um, and then a much smaller people number of folks actually delved through more than um, a single page. So kind of interesting things. But And, and I kind of have a theory on this. And basically, if you look at the number of hits here and you go back to the duration of the hits, that basically tells me that people are clicking on the Wawa map to drill down to their forecast. Um, some other interesting things, uh, next thing is that you can expand out is the acquisition. And probably the most interesting thing under the acquisition category is the network referrals under social. So basically these are your social media referrals. So right now it looks like the vast majority of referrals that we're getting are coming from Facebook, followed by Twitter, followed by the pack. So, um, and then you can actually click here on Facebook and see what was actually referred. So this actually broke down. So it looks like um, Milwaukee posted an article on Facebook about land spouts that drew some traffic back to our website. Um, so you can kind of use this to do a little bit of digging, but it's interesting to see this as an overall wrap-up. Um, probably the thing that I think folks are most interested in are basically when you start wanting to drill down to, okay, what are the hits my office is getting? So in that case, you want to click on behavior, and then you want to drill down here to site content and then do content drill down. And what this is going to bring up, and once again, this is going for the period up here at the top of my page, the last month, which I can change that period. Um, these are the number of hits that these locations got. So the most hits came to the CRH page, and that's because we have the Nowcast, the, the graph, the weather stories, and the Outlooks page all come back to here. So if I want to expand out on that, I can and actually And Ryan, how do we get that. that to show up? I don't have... Um I don't have that. I don't have site content under behavior flow. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, we can we can we can we can try to track that down offline, Kelly. Okay. Um, so in this example right here, um, looks like the most hits of the weather story page went to MPX, and over the last month, they drew about. 70,000 hits to that particular link. Um, and as you can see, you can scroll down. Um, by default, it will only show you 10 rows. So if you, I wanted to see more rows, I can change that to 50. And I can kind of scroll down through that. Um, bouncing back up a level. Um, if I wanted to actually look at a web uh, particular office's hits, so I'm going to click on MPX. Um, same thing here. So in this case, they got um, 837,000 hits to their web page over the last month. And 800,000 of those, or about 95%, went to their main page. Um, and then their subpages got uh, about the other 5% of the hits. So their most popular page that they have subpage during this time period um, was their 50th anniversary page, followed by storm reports, followed by HWO, and on down. Um, I can click on this particular um, page and I can see it looks like all the hits pretty much occurred in a short time period. So I can see these pages, I mean, these hits occurred basically starting May 6th 
and tailed off there by about uh, May 8th. Um, one thing I can do, though, well, that's kind of interesting. So in this case, uh, you can see percentages, how long a user looked at the page. So the average user spent about three minutes on this page. 50% um, of the people who looked at this page went ahead and exited afterwards. But one interesting thing you can do is right here on uh, page, primary page um, dimension, you can change the other here. And if you come down to this alphabetical, display the alphabetical list, um, I click landing page. And what that tells me is the people that navigated to that page, how they got there. So about half of them came from Minneapolis's main page. Um, another significant portion, almost half, came directly to that page. That means they were maybe tweeted out a link or something else that actually caused them to come in. They may have clicked on a headline that was on forecast.weather.gov that brought them directly in. So they came in from some other manner other than clicking on like a headline or a link from your home page. Um, in this particular case, we had a few users get referred to by one of the sub pages. And then finally, strangely enough, we had some users referred to it from Omaha's page that maybe clicked and missed and drove over to Minneapolis's page. Um, so it's kind of interesting to look at how people get down to your web pages. Um, Another thing I kind of want to cover under the site content is events. And so basically, once again, these are the outgoing links. So I can see the overall outgoing links that uh, during this. And like you, as you can see here, I just started collecting the data on May 12th, so you can't really put a lot of stock into it until later in the time period. But the interesting thing with this is, Based on that limited sample, the most popular outgoing link from our web pages is the Minneapolis web page, followed next by the click arrows on the Wawa map, followed by the, the WPC forecast map that's on everybody's pages. And then it's what's kind of interesting, and granted we haven't had a ton of active weather, but I'll expand out the rows here to 50, SPC is 13th in the list. And so like you can scroll down and look through this data. If you want to limit the data to a particular time period, so I'll go back to content, drill down. Let's say I just want to look over the last week. I oh, can nice. set my start time, the 13th, hit apply. Now I'll just see information for the last week. So it looks like MPX is the winner for this time period. And then if I click down on their website, same thing, I can see what the most popular page is were for that particular time period. So this is just restricting it to the specific time range. Now, there is a really cool function that if you install an extension in the browser, and I have it installed in this browser here, and it's called Page Analytics by Google. So you can go to the Chrome store if you're running Chrome and get that put in. And what that allows me to do is get what they call in-page analytics. So in this case, I've got it turned on and I've got Pleasant Hills web page called up. And right now this is using the last month for its data. Um, but what it's highlighting is, is things that people have clicked on. So like this today in weather headlines. That in that one month time period has been clicked on 0.7% um, of the time, 0.7% of the users that came clicked on this. So it got about 1,200 clicks. Um, if I want to come down here to the bottom, I can see, so they have um, basically the site map. I can see what's clicked on on the site map. Um, I can change the threshold. Right now it doesn't put the green box or the orange box unless you have a tenth of a percent. I can set that all the way to zero. You can see those will update. If I come down and click on their local forecast menu and highlight it, there's the percentage of time people are clicking on the different things in the forecast menu. So what this allows you to do is see different things on your page, what people are, are, have clicked on. So it's a pretty cool tool. So you, know, you, can, you can drill down into it and click on a particular subpage and then see what on that subpage people are clicking on. Now the only caveat here is obviously the only thing it tracks is local pages or pages that are local to the weather.gov domain. So that's why the only thing you see under the forecast map is fire weather because the forecast discussion is actually located on a separate domain. So I'd recommend 
uh, pulling down this in-page analytics. Let's see if I and and you can toggle that on and off if it gets annoying. You can change the time frame. Same thing. So it, it's a pretty cool way to look at what users are actually clicking on your page. So basically, in a nutshell, that is Google Analytics. Um, you do have the option to do some add to dashboard and do shortcuts for some of these things. So if you get a particular thing you want to look at all the time and don't want to have to do all these mouse clicks to do it, you can add a shortcut. So in this case, if I want to go back to the last month um, and I want to look at, let me go back up to my content drill down. And I want to see the last month. Now I could add this to my dashboard. I think I made one for Plovo as an example. Or I can, oops, wrong tab, go back to. Or I could also go back to the previous tab and add it as a bookmark. So those are ways you can save some page views. So. So at this point, I, what I'd like to do is open it up to questions, and if there's anything I can answer or try to clarify a little better for folks. Ryan, this is Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi. Um, could you uh, clarify how we get to have this? You said something about a form, and maybe that went to ITOs or something. I'm, I don't remember. Um, I oh, sent it out to everyone, and basically, and I will be happily to resend that message. But if you look here under admin and user account, these are all the folks that I've already added. I think the last count this morning, I have about uh, 80 or 90 users I've granted access. Um, it, if you can't find the email and just want to send me an email, I will happily add you to this. But basically, once your name is in here, you have access to all this data. Great. So yeah, okay. um, if you can't find that, uh, I will resend the email to all this afternoon. But if you can't, for some reason, access the form, just send me an email and I'll grant you access. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I want to have a few caveats on what it can't track. Um, if you have a, a link, and, and I think the Pleasant Hill, the situation report right now, so in this case, this goes to a PDF document. Right now, it's not going to be able to track that. We would have to have a embed that in a page or a jump page to be able to track that. So there are certain things that we still may have to go back to Akamai to, to trace, and I can help you with those if you want to see some of those. Um, so basically, if you have an embedded if you have an embedded, or if you link directly to an image that's not embedded in a page, that's not going to get tracked. Or in this case, if you address, if you link to a PDF, that is not going to get tracked. So those are the two caveats for right now, as far as things that we can track and can't track. Any other questions? How did <clears throat> this is Nancy? How did you get that? the site to <clears throat> pop up in, in in line. How do you get how did you get your site to pop up? I missed okay, that whole to thing. To pop up in, in the inline Google Analytics? Yes, yes. You'll have to go to the Chrome store and um, download the page analytics Chrome extension, which will put this little orange guy up in the corner here in the upper right hand corner of my browser. Once you so is put that, that only available in Chrome? It's, it's available in the Chrome Store. I think there is a Firefox version as well. Uh, another way you can get to it is if you come down here to in-page analytics, it will beat its head against the wall for a while, and then it will grouse at you and say, you have a much better experience if you use the, the widget in the browser. And then I think it also has a link to Firefox. So, but basically, this is another way that will actually take you to the web page. Yeah, okay, so right here, if I'm in Chrome, I click on that, it loads the extension, and I'm good to go. And then it gives me the in-page analytics. And then I can shut that off at any time. So if I if I don't want to see that in the page, I said, then it should <laughs> it should go away. If I've turned it off, there we go. So now I just see the regular web page. 
And if I want to turn it on, I can just click back on there and turn it back on. Hey, Brian, this is Suzanne uh, down in Wichita. Um, now, you're only going to be able to look at the analytics um, based on when you started getting permission to look at the analytics, correct? So we can no, you can, if, as soon as you've been granted access, you'll be able to look at analytics to the point that we started collecting them. Um, okay, and we and went back to when again? Um, basically, data from April 6th on is it, what I would consider good. On April 6th, we started filtering NOAA. So one thing we do from this is we filter all NOAA.gov hits. So if you're looking at the web page in your office, it's not going to measure those clicks. It's only going to measure clicks from outside folks. We're purposely filtering out all NOAA.gov hits. Okay, because we, we were testing the, the head... Um, you know, the, the headline versus narrative this weekend, so I was just wondering if you did a comparison between those two. Yeah. So, now, the so one thing is to see the stats like the um, going back to the content drill down, this content is only updated once a day. So, as you can see, I see yesterday's data. I'll have to wait till midnight or whenever they load it to see today's data. So, it comes in in day long. It's not going to come in in intermental, so you'll see to see the 20th, you'll have to wait till tomorrow to see that information. Same with the in-page analytics. Any other questions? This is Hastings. Who can have access? Can anyone or a certain number of people or? Anyone who wants it, I'll happily give it to them. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Hey, Brian, if, if we want to know how we as, as our own agency, as far as NOAA uses our own web pages, is there a way we can temporarily look at the, the um, stats without, you know, where we're not filtering NOAA.gov? Um, not that I'm currently aware of right now. Okay, thanks. Well, all right. Well, if nobody else has any further questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap, wrap up the webinar. You're welcome to contact me anytime via phone or email if you have questions. Um, if you find a cool use for the stats or something that you want to share, please let me know. And like I said, if you have others in your office that would like access to this, um, like I said, encourage them to fill out the form. It takes us all two minutes to add somebody, and we'd be happy to add them. So thanks, everybody, for your time today.